going to film this on my DSLR. Got all the introduction filmed and that sort of stuff recorded beforehand. And coming up to recording the video, I actually forgot to charge my battery and I don't have an AC adapter. So I'm just recording you on my phone, but it's going to be in lovely high definition and it's going to look probably grainy as hell. I can't believe I've made it to 600 different beer reviews here on YouTube. Of course, I've uploaded other videos, so it's not my 600th upload. It's just going to be uploaded at 600. And I'm recording this on New Year's Eve and it's about 45 minutes to uh, the start of 2018. So I thought, what better way to see the year in than having a nice barrel aged imperial stout and as you can see there by the beautifully framed uh, image I'm going to be looking at the Apex Twin which is a double stout brewed by Time and Tide who are one of the local breweries to my good friend Craig over at Kent Beer Reviews and uh, he's reviewed quite a lot of their beers so I'm not only going to put his link down below but also his Time and Tide playlist if he has indeed created one so you can find out about the brew for yourself. I picked this bottle up in, it was around the early stage of October from Beer Moth in Manchester. And uh, you might notice that I have just come out of the shower. As you can see, I like putting effort into uh, producing videos for you guys and I, I hope you do appreciate it. But um, yeah, this was actually, I thought it was £5.95 but I think it was £9.95 because the label had faded. But I can't remember if I actually got charged 9 95 or 5 95 because I bought other beers and I was uh, a tiny bit pissed when I bought this, which is never a good thing. So it just completely went over my head. Very excited to try this. This is, like I said, the Apex Twin Double Stout, which is double stout aged in wine barrels. So not too sure what wine barrels have been used. Um, I'm guessing this is the... They do a double stout and they've just aged some. I think this is the 2017 vintage, so this year. I could be wrong, but the best before date is 14th of the 7th, 2020. Now, you see a beer like this with that sort of um, best before date and its style. And then it says, bottle condition beer, store upright, best served chilled. I'm not going to chill a, a barrel aged imperial stout and please drink fresh when the hops are at their happiest. Um, yeah, I don't really want to, well I'd love to drink this fresh, it was killing me opening my little cupboard with all my beers and uh, thinking of getting this out and drinking it but I thought no Pierre, show some constraint, wait till Christmas and then I thought no, wait till the new year. So, uh, yeah, it's a niggledy thing, but it gave me a little bit of a chuckle, as you can tell I was in. Hysterics. Beautifully presented beer in a 375ml bottle, and it is cork and caged. So, uh, fingers crossed, this doesn't go absolutely everywhere. And I should have probably loosened the, uh, the cage a little, because it has actually snapped. Thanks to my master. Oh, no. As I'm rambling on, I finally get it off. Doesn't usually take me that long to get it off. But um, anyway, so uh, yeah, fingers crossed that this does not go everywhere. And uh, yeah, hopefully, well, it's coming off quite easy actually. So here we go. Oh, that's a satisfying hiss. Oh, look at that smoke. Very rarely capture good smoke on my openings, but um, take that as you will. So anyway, let's see what we get when we pour this beer in the glass. There we go. It's got a little bit of a glug, but not as much as uh, I would expect, especially that ABV and being barrel aged. I am expecting the body not to be thin, but to be thinner than what you might expect. And to be honest, I've never tried just the, the regular version, so I don't really have any sort of reference. So I'm going into this one pretty blind. And I don't think I've actually drank any Time or Tide beers. Um, I saw they had quite a good range in Beer Muff, But when I saw this, I thought I'd give it a go. So, beer in a glass then. And that to me, I don't know if that... That could be jet black in this lighting, but 
I don't know, it's got some slight browny ruby hues around the edge of the glass. Let me just have a look here. No, that doesn't really help. Uh, yeah, there's some brown tinge to it, so it's not completely black, but it is a really nice opaque beer, sort of like oaky in appearance. And as you can see, beer poured with, uh, as you would expect from an ABV of this, a beer of this ABV, and barrel age, especially in wine barrels, it's not really produced much head, but it's got a nice little lining. And I've got to say, I could smell the beer from here. Speaking of which, what does it smell like? Give it a bit of a swell. Well, I definitely get that red wine. Yeah, I'm not a fan of red wine. Um, the only wine that I really like to drink is a good rosé. I say good, Blossom Hill Rosé. You know, you can't really complain for a few quid. Um, but I don't tend to drink wine, especially when I'm drinking other things, because I've had two absolutely harrowing experiences uh, involving wine. It smells like red wine, which I do like to cook with. So you definitely get that from the barrel. It has subsided a little bit. You're getting a bit of chocolate coming through. There's like a very subtle, mild um, coffee. A little bit of a, a woody sort of aroma. But yeah, I've got to say, now that it's settled in the glass, it's a very, it's not a dull beer by any stretch, but it's really nice, mellow, nothing is screaming out there. It's really nice and balanced. Beautiful, decadent flavors. You get a little bit of berry. You naturally get some dark grape character, but slight oak tannins, lovely sweetness. Almost has like very, a sort of like a port or a, a sherry-like sweetness to it. Yeah, it, it just reminds you of stuff that I cook with. And then you get, it's lifted with nice chocolatiness and a little bit of coffee. Yeah, it's a lovely, pleasant smelling beer. So, let's give it a taste. Cheers, guys. That's really nice, actually. You do pick up that red wine character, but to me it's more on the back end. Let me just go to the low power, low power mode thing. The first thing you get is this lovely sort of um, woody coffee sort of flavour. A little bit of a cocoa or cacao or drinking chocolate powder. Maybe a slight bit of a... Um, baker's chocolate, like a dark chocolate, almost. Then that coffee comes through. And then you get that sort of red wine flavour. Slight acidity to it, as you would expect. Well, that's funny. The lighting's changed. And the camera angle's changed. Almost miraculously. Oh, wait a minute. I ran out of storage on my phone. But yeah, the barrel for me is the star of the show of this beer. You're getting that woodiness, you're getting that grapey red wineness from it. Red wineness. That's going in the encyclopedia of beer terms. Um, yeah, that like sort of, I don't know, it is quite whiny, it's got that slight acidity, but it's not at the same time, those like the actual stout characters come into play really nicely in that regard. Especially the underlining coffee uh, the only thing I would say to detract from this beer is the body is a little bit thin. Now, I was expecting that being that it's been aged in a wine barrel, but it just is a little bit too thin, even with that considered. Um, Flavour-wise, it's lovely. That ABV is masked beautifully. That has mellowed down absolutely wonderfully. But... Um, yeah, it's a very pleasant, surprisingly drinkable beer. The only slight hint of alcohol is as it's going down as you're drinking it. But yeah, this is it's a lovely beer. It's just, for me personally, it could be a little bit more bold on its body. Get like chocolate covered raisins. But yeah, like I said, it's all about the barrel with this. And if you like those characteristics, if you like a good wine barrel flavor, then you're gonna really, really like this one. The more I'm drinking it now though, I am starting to taste that alcohol a little bit more. But it, again, it's reminds me of more like a, a, a sweet cooking sherry. 
Because we've all, when we've cooked with sherry, we've all taken a cheeky little swig, haven't we? And it's reminding me of that like fortified wine character. Surprisingly smooth, even though light bodied. Really nice and flavoursome, yet mellow at the same time. There's no harshness. Um, lovely grape characters. The wine flavour is there, but not too much. It's not overbearing. It's just, it's the balance of the beer that really works well uh, with this. And uh, it'd be interested to see what this would have tasted like maybe a couple of years down the line. Um, maybe it would have got a little bit more potentially viscous. I mean, it is leaving my mouth a little bit sticky. So it's not exactly watery, far from it. Um, it is bold, but just a little bit lighter than I would like it to be in terms of its body, but this isn't gonna last me long. I'm gonna drink this ridiculously quick. And then I've got an Imperial Stout after this, and a few other Stouts that I'm gonna be drinking in the early hours of 2018. So uh, I'm gonna have quite the hangover. But uh, yeah, it's a really intriguing introduction to a brewery that I will be trying a hell of a lot more, especially since it's one of the favorites of a good friend of mine, Craig from Kent Beer Reviews. So in terms of a rating then, on the Apex Twin Double Stout, aged in wine barrels, I'm gonna give that one an eight out of 10. Uh, if I had a bit more body, it could possibly get a nine or a 10. Um, maybe if there was a little bit more of like a, if it was a little bit sweeter as well, I think that would help. Uh, but not overbearingly sweet because then it's just undrinkable. It just needs a little bit more sweetness, a little bit more body, and you've got a 10 out of 10. Um, but I'm sure this changes from year to year. Maybe they use different barrels. I'm not too sure, um, as is mostly the case. Never do any research on these reviews. But it is highly recommended if you pick it up. Uh, if I did indeed pay £10 for this, uh, maybe a bigger bottle. That would have justified it a little bit more. But then again, I am very tight-fisted when it comes to uh, money in general but I knew that I was going to have this for a special occasion so I'm happy to you know spend the 10 quid to have a nice pleasurable drinking experience to see 2018 and even you know probably end up drinking this before it's 12 o'clock that's that's just me a little nod to Craig there but uh, yeah check out Time and Tide if you've tried this beer let me know your thoughts opinions if you've tried anything else or previous vintages of this one I do think this is uh, the 2017 one it could be last year's I don't know I'll do a little bit of research and you'll you'll see that in the description or I'll just edit out all of those references uh, because I'm a whiz kid when it comes to editing as you can tell flawless uh, production value intriguing one it's nice it's warming me up nicely now as I'm talking and uh, yeah, I'm definitely going to try more beers from these guys in the future. So uh, yeah, check out Craig from Kent Beer Reviews. Check out his Time and Tide playlist. Check out Time and Tide. Give me your experiences with Time and Tide. And if you tried this beer, let me know uh, what you thought of it. Check out my Imperial Stout playlist down below, as well as my British Craft Beer playlist, because uh, what, what a year this has been for British Craft Beer. Anyway, 8 out of 10. Waffed on for way too long. Hopefully this video comes out well. I've got a hell of a lot to edit in this review. Going to upload HD. It's probably going to take a full day to upload. But again, you guys are worth it. So thank you for sticking with me through this uh, horrific video. Thank you for sticking with me for 600 beer reviews. I don't know how you do it. And uh, yeah, let's hope that 2018 is going to be a good year and an even better year for beer. Thank you guys for watching, and I shall hopefully see you all later. Cheers. Awkward insert. We've all been there. Don't forget to check out Beermoth as well. Fantastic bottle shop. If you're in Manchester, give them a look. Check out Cafe Beermoth as well. And uh, yeah, I'm off to drink some more beer. <laughs>